Welcome back to Dissect the Question. A healthy person is convinced by a TV advertisement to purchase a home kit for genetic testing to trace their ancestry. The results show a mutation in their dystrophin gene, which, if passed on to their offspring, could result in a muscular dystrophy. Which of the following best describes the role that dystrophin plays in muscle contractions? So we look at the clinical vignette first, we see muscular dystrophy. So trophy refers to growth, and dys refers to abnormal growth, so it seems like muscular dystrophy is some sort of abnormal growth of the muscle or atrophy of the muscle, where the muscle will not be able to carry out its purposeful movements. So the muscles will be weak. So we're looking for something that's going to produce weak muscles if they have muscular dystrophy. But let's look at the question. The question says, which of the following best describes the role that dystrophin plays in muscle contractions? So we have to be careful because muscular dystrophy is a disease, but the question is asking about dystrophin in normal muscle contraction. It doesn't say anything about the disease. Let's look at the answers then. Stiffens the actin filament, stiffens the myosin filament, or weakens the actin filament, or weakens the myosin filament. And if we go further with each one of those choices, it seems like stiffening is associated with increasing cross bridges, cycling, and the active force for purposeful movement. Stiffening here also increases the number of cross bridges, cycling, and the active force for purposeful movement, where weakens the actin filament, weakens the myosin filament, are associated with decreasing the number of cross bridges and the active force for purposeful movement. So what do we do with this? We're looking for the normal function of dystrophin, not for what dystrophin is doing when it's deficient, when it's mutated, to produce muscle weakness in muscular dystrophy. So, clearly we can eliminate C and D because weakening the actin filament, weakening the myosin filament, decreasing the number of cross bridges, and decreasing the active force for purposeful movement would occur if a person had muscular dystrophy and didn't have the dystrophin, but certainly not the normal function of dystrophin. So the, what's left is to determine whether dystrophin is associated with the myosin filament or the actin filament. It's associated with the actin filament. So if we look at a sarcomere, it looks something like this. We have something called Z-lines and the actin filaments are attached to the Z-lines, like this. Those are the thin filaments. And the thick filaments are the myosin filaments. And it's the overlapping of the actin and myosin filaments that produces cross bridges. It allows the actin and myosin to interact, create cross bridges, and bring those Z-lines closer together. When those Z-lines come closer together, we have a contraction. So if dystrophin, I'm going to call dystrophin D here, is associated with the actin filament, stiffening it, it certainly could increase the number of cross bridges by optimizing the overlap between actin and myosin. So the function of dystrophin is actually a little bit more complicated than that. Dystrophin actually helps the actin filament interact with the plasma membrane, or what we call the sarcolemma out here, and there's the extracellular matrix that has proteins that dystrophin is actually interacting with. So the dystrophin is actually causing a linkage between the actin filament the plasma membrane 
and the extracellular matrix proteins, for example, one of the extracellular matrix proteins is called laminin. Well, why do we have dystrophin then? Dystrophin is going to stiffen the actin filament, help increase the number of cross bridges, and it's also going to help protect the sarcomere from damage during contraction by interacting with the plasma membrane and the extracellular matrix to stabilize the sarcomere. Therefore, this is a no-brainer. A is the correct answer.